Alrighty, welcome to another 4 on 4 cube draft. We've got myself, Team J Bro, Dan, and Tom Stock, who I don't, I don't really know, I gotta say. Uh, so some new faces here, battling against Talisker, Sam Rolflo, another Dan, and Falero. So we got we got a bunch of uh, the, the normal cubers in here, and no power, but you know what? I really li like Flash, and first picking Flash is pretty fun. There's also Inti, I think Inti's a pretty reasonable first pick, but... I think I'm going to first pick Flash here and hope uh, we can get something sweet going on with it. Best card in this pack is probably Ignoble Hierarch, which I still will probably take. I think being blue-green and using Flash is pretty decent. So there's also a Ketria Triome since blue-green-red is pretty good with Flash, but I don't know, I'm really into I'm really into the one-drops. I think the one-drops are, are very strong. And... This patch, this pack doesn't have anything super enticing, but I might just thieving skydiver. I really like this card as well. It's that, or I'm not. I don't really want Carnosaur. I don't think Flash Carnosaur is that good of a combo. Fire Covenant is good, but I already have fly, a, a blue card and a green card. So taking another blue card over a black red card makes sense, though. I guess the Ignoble does help tap for all the Fire Covenant mana. But I think skydiver here, and then maybe Wheel bring to light. We'll see. Okay, but now I can take Sylvan Karyatid, and uh, I think the door might be open to draft like a some kind of five-color deck. That over Xander's Lounge, and I mean Badlands, <laughs> a green-black land. So yeah, nothing too nothing too exciting. And then here, ooh, I do like Bank Buster with the Mana Dorks. I think that could be pretty good. Memory Jar is also nice when you're just trying to assemble a two-card combo. Draw sevens are pretty helpful there. There's also Wall of Roots and Nyssa in green, but I don't really like Wall of Roots all that much. I think I like the five color dorks or the, the, the multicolor mana dorks a lot better. I'm kind of thinking I just bank buster here. This is looking like the, a good start to a bank buster deck. I don't really want to take a green card. I don't mind passing a white card. And we're not quite there on memory jar, but mana, mana dorks into bank buster I actually think works out pretty nicely. And here, there's a green sun zenith and a tireless tracker, and I guess a blue green land, but kind of in on tireless tracker it works nicely with accelerants we also could be opening the door to like a Tularean academy deck now tracker and bank buster are a good start to that and taking good green cards out of every pack is pretty nice i don't think we're, yeah we're not going to get anything back here last two cards probably high tide tendrils but uh i think this is a pretty solid little start and there's not much we're looking for besides flash something to go with flash would be nice Oh, there's Woodfall Primus. That's actually great with Flash because it destroys two lands and you let your left with a 5-5. Slam. Woodfall Primus over a Braid. Unexpectedly absent. The two best cards I'm passing there. And then, ooh, I love a Hex Drinker. And this is a, such a good Hex Drinker start. I do like Days as well, but this looks like a lot better for Hex Drinker. And Kinnon's also worth noting because there is a Basalt Monolith that's going to be coming back in a couple picks. But I'm happy enough just taking Hex Drinker and curving into that. Okay, so this pack has Kozilek, which doesn't work with uh, Flash. Finale, which works with you a lot of mana. Axbane Ferox is just a four drop or Sharp Eyed Rookie. So two mana, two, two Vigilance. And when you play something with higher power or toughness, this gets a plus one, plus one counter and you get a clue. So it would trigger off Karyatid or Tracker. It wouldn't trigger off either of those. Uh, unfortunately, I think I'm supposed to Axbane Ferox here and just take the more assertive card. But yeah, I'm not sure. Here, we're blue-green, so none of these lands directly work. I'm thinking just either Creeping Tar Pit or Lush Portico. I guess the, the, the one with types is pretty nice, so I'll take the, the green-white. Okay, there's a Spell Queller and a Talisman, another green-white land. There's also a Bring to Light in case I pick up Valky. Also, Bring to Light can help you cast Flash. It's obviously not the most mana efficient, but I think, I think I'm okay taking Bring to Light here. Oh, I'll take a black-green land now. You never know. Over Unearth, Might Stone, a Weak Stone. And then Nyssa and Dryad Arbor came back. I don't have the Green Suns. You know, I think Nyssa's a little weak. I'm just going to hate the Council's Judgment. I think that card is, is very good. Oh, so it's Kosali Pride Mage and Tendrils that came back. All right, well, I'll take the Pride Mage. And then I'll take an Unexpectedly Absent for free. Okay, so we've got a good start to all this. Oh, and there's a Mock Sapphire. I'd love to pick that up. Passing an Oko, but that's fine because we cut blue-green. Or we blue green seem pretty open, so it's not going to be the easiest for Dan to play, but probably still will take Oko, and then the rest of the cards are a lot less good. All right, that works for me. 
don't really have the right lands yet, but we'll, we'll work on that. And there's show and tell, not really into that. Feywild Caretaker, True Name Nemesis, Lurus. I think this is a Feywild Caretaker deck. First of all, I've got a bunch of acceleration. I have Ignoble, Sylvan Caryatid, and Mox. Also, flashing it in isn't crazy. You end up with the initiative right, right away. And I think it's just good in these blue-green decks. Passing up a Dothy Voidwalker, a Zagoth Triumph, a Lurus. Yeah, those are some good cards for sure. Okay, this pack has a Tishana's Tidebinder for me. I think I'm going to take that over Odawara. Tidebinder is a pretty good assertive card. And then uh, there's also Walking Ballista, which is nice. Temple Garden might come back, but I think we're happy enough. Tidebindering. Oh, so here we've got Time Twister and Subtlety, but I'm taking the Pride Mage out for now. There's also Skull Clamp. Skull Clamp is pretty good with Thieving Skydiver, Ignoble, and Hex Drinker. Mm. There's also... Woodfall Primus, let's see. Time Twister looks pretty good in this deck in general. Just, again, draw sevens are pretty nice with uh, combos, like the Flash combo. And this deck, I did pass a Narset that's probably not coming back. I don't think I want to take Subtlety. I don't have enough blue cards to make that reliable enough. I think I just take Time Twister. I think Time Twister is just a very strong card. So I like taking that and... Hoping to pick up one of the draw seven punishers. I, I have the start of some mana for Leovold, though I guess I kind of wish I took the Creeping Tar Pit over Lush Portico at this point. But we'll see what we get here. I just like Time Twister and decks that have moxes and, and mana accelerants. You can just end up in spots where you just get to Time Twister with four or five mana when your opponent's on like two mana and you get a lot more value from that. Okay, this pack has a Lion's Eye Diamond, which I'm not super well... Uh, suited to take advantage of. Kite Sail Larcenist Teferi is a fantastic card. Not really a Forensic Gadgeteer deck. Mm. And I don't think I want Tarmogoyf here. I do like Tarmogoyf. I'm looking to see if I want Kite Sail Larcenist. It'll be a lot of three drops. The other option is take Teferi and try to splash it off of Lush Portico. I mean, Teferi is a better card for sure. Uh, I kind of think I will just take the Teferi. I think Teferi is awesome. Okay, well, there's a spell seeker that can get flash, but this isn't the most flashy of flash decks. I might just take Avacyn's Pilgrim. It's a one drop that can help cast Teferi and Time Twister and all my threes. That seems a lot better for me. So I'm I'm slamming Avacyn's Pilgrim over Spell Seeker and I guess Sail into the West. Okay, there's Mystical Tutor, which that does get flash and Time Twister, which is nice. There's also Grim Monolith. There's also Grist. I do like Grist. I didn't take the Green Suns, but. Grist, I have a green black land and a ignoble. I think Grist is just an awesome card. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to take Grist here. We, we still need to pick up some mana. Oh, there's Questing Beast, though. I'll take a Questing Beast also. I think I like that over Elver Spirit Guide, Talisman, and then a bunch of red cards. And really what we want going into the next pack is just more lands. I think that otherwise I, I kind of like the setup. We have a good assertive blue-green deck here. Okay, so Nature's Lore Wield, which can currently get either of these lands, which is kind of nice. Arcane Denial is good in this kind of deck, but I probably should just take Triplicate Titan because it's another card that works with Flash. And now I'll have two things. It flashes in three, three, three flyers. Like, that's pretty good. So I think I'm supposed to take that because now I don't have to worry about getting World Spine Worm. Though I would have liked Arcane Denial. Oh, Show and Tell. I just don't really like Show and Tell with most of these cards. I'm kind of thinking that like Simic Growth Chamber might actually be better for this deck. Though I guess I don't have a way to put... Because I don't really need Spider Bluff Canal. I don't really have a way to play extra lands is kind of an issue. But I do think I do think Growth Chamber is is potentially good. Okay, Temple Garden I'll happily take over... Yeah, Get Rog Monster, Bonehorn Dracosaur. Oh, Subtlety came back? Okay, I'm getting enough blue cards that Subtlety is starting to be good. And I don't think I want Rophelos or Ashen Rider. That is not, not what we're going for. Ooh, Kite Sail, Larcenist, and Tarmogoyf both came back. This is looking like a pretty nice little Larcenist deck. Just a good way to interact. And I guess I'll hate an Armageddon. No, no, no. Uh, I got past a bunch of really late white cards, so... No, actually, I'll take the Geddon. Ge Gear Drake is not a big deal. Oh, that's a late recurring nightmare. Funny. This deck could actually side in Armageddon against, uh, against like, a combo deck or something. Or a control deck. All right, so... Mostly just looking for lands and... I guess more interaction. 
we were pretty good on threats. This is mainly what I'm trying to say. <laughs> what do we got? Um, there's a world spine, but we're absolutely not taking world spine here. I think I'd rather take Undermount Adventure or Polluted Delta, and I think it's probably still just Undermount Adventure. I've got Mox and three Accelerants, and just casting one of those early is just how you win the game. And I'm not going to get Delta back, but I'll probably get World Spine back because this pack's pretty good. I'm passing a Ragavan, two Fetchlands, and a Counterspell. Those are gone. Troll's gone. That's five. So I just need someone to want Elite Spellbinder and like Dress Down or Witherbloom Command. Yeah, I, don't, I think World Spine's probably coming back. And I'm just going to take Undermount Adventure. And this is a fantastic Mox Diamond deck. So this makes me feel pretty good about passing the Polluted Delta, which would have been nice otherwise. So. Or I guess maybe even Marsh Flats, honestly. But uh, yeah, I'm going to take Mox Diamond here. This is a very good Mox Diamond deck. The Spring to Light's not looking great right now. But if a Valky comes back, I might consider it. And there's like Underground Sea and Dotha Triome here. There's Delighted Halfling. Those are all fine cards. But the second Mox into like the really proactive blue-green deck is so good. What Really what I would just kill for now is just some blue-green lands. I, all I have is a Simic Growth Chamber, which is not really ideal. Though it's good with the Mox. Okay, so this pack has some stuff. It's got an Ancient Tomb, which is actually looking pretty dope in this deck. I've got a bunch of things with two colorless in their cost, including a bunch of threes. Skydiver basically counts. Also goes Twister. It's also actually fine with Bankbuster. All right, yeah, we're taking Ancient Tomb over Asika's Chariot, Upheaval, Tough Cookie. Yeah, nothing nothing too, too big there. Okay, this pack has... Cryptic Command, which I'm probably probably a bit, a bit ambitious. Overgrown Tomb is kind of nice because it can help splash this Grist. I like that better than another Tap Land. I already have two of the Tap Lands. I don't need a third. Sylvan Library might just be better, though. With the two Moxes, getting to play turn one Sylvan is pretty awesome. So I think I'll take Sylvan and hope one of the lands comes back. If not, there's still like Plow Under, Trinket Mage, Brazen Borrow. There's like a lot of playables in this pack for us. All right, well, we're not an Echo of Eons deck, I'll tell you that much. We might be a Court of Garenbrig deck. It's not the best with Ancient Tomb, that's for sure. Because alternately, there's Lotus Cobra, which I guess with the two Moxes, turn one Cobra, turn two four drop is pretty good, and I'm playing four colors. Yeah, I think given that, I should just take the Cobra here over Court of Garenbrig, passing like Flame Slash, Mother of Runes, passing some good stuff, but looks like a pretty good Lotus Cobra deck here. Huh, we don't have red fixing, but sneak attack would be pretty good in this deck. I guess I just have a Mox, an Ignoble, and then my Mana Dorks. Other, alternately, I could take Brainstorm, which it's not looking like the best in this deck. At this point, I'm pretty good on playables. Do I want Talisman? No, I might just take Beseju. Yeah, I don't think this deck needs to put sneak in, and Beseju is just a, an extra, basically a free spell. Here, we could... Deathrite Shaman to try to go with like Mox Diamond and Surveil Lands or how you get lands in the graveyard. Because the biggest thing with Deathrite is getting a land in the graveyard. There's also Lotus Field, but I don't really... This is not a Lotus Field deck. Not a Dig Through Time deck. Not really a Neshoba Brawler deck either. I'm not going to have red and I'm not... I'm usually going to be... It's going to be a 3-3 maybe. I could take Deathrite here. It's a good card. I don't think I'm going to play any of the other cards. I don't care too much about Simeon Spirit Guide. Sure, I'll take Death Rite, though I don't, I'm don't. i not guaranteed to want to put the card in my deck. Here we've got a late Lorin. We've got Sensei's Top, which is definitely not what this deck wants. Eagles of the North can go get a Temple Garden, so it's like a green-white land. Hmm. That's not terrible. I don't think I want Corpse Dance. Yeah, I'll take Eagles, though. I don't know that I'm going to play it. I, I would consider it. Okay, World Spine came back. So did Troll, funnily enough. But World Spine can just replace Triplicate Titan. It's so much stronger. Here, I think I'm just going to hate Pyrokinesis because it's just the best card against me by a lot. And I'm not playing any of the other ones. I'm not playing Tough Cookie in this deck. I guess I'll hate Battle Ball. I don't even know. It's all kind of the same. Okay, Blue Black Tapland came back. So did Plow Under. This is a pretty messed up Plow Under deck. Maybe I just take that. I don't really want a blue-black tap land in my deck. Yeah, this is Ancient Tomb and everything. Uh, Zernorb does not much for me. Restless Prairie, I don't think I'm going to play. But I guess I would consider it. Sure. And currently this is 15, 16 lands. So this is like one too many. 
I think, I think The Apprentice is a stronger card. Yeah, we'll have to take a look. Oh, <laughs> last pick, Lotus Field. All right. We'll, we'll take a look at uh, what this looks like, but uh, I like where we're at. All right. So this is 15 lands plus a Mox Sapphire, which is 16. And I don't really count Mox Diamonds, so I would like to get one more land in there. One question I have, I suppose, is do I want to splash black and or white? Let's see. So for white, I have a Lush Portico and a Temple Garden and an Avacyn's Pilgrim and a Lotus Cobra and a Caryatid. And I can also play Eagles of the North because it can go get Temple Garden. So I think maybe I just cut the Grist. I mean, Grist, I would have an Underground Mortuary. And I, that is it. Oh, I also have a Restless Prairie that I actually could play in this deck. Yeah, maybe I just do that. Hmm, I've got a, a Deathrite Shaman as well. Interesting. Well, let's see. So th this is now the correct number because this is now 15 lands plus Mox Sapphire and Eagles of the North. Mm -hmm. Leaving me with a straight blue-green deck that doesn't even need a Basic Plains. Can just play... Yeah, that's plenty of white sources for a Teferi. Teferi is just a really strong card. All right, I think I kind of like that. Do that. Put in some uh, islands and forests and basically call it a day. Let's take a look at what the team's got. <laughs> All right, so Jay Bro's up to his usual tricks. No uh, no Mana Crypt, unfortunately. But Red White Beats with Wasteland. Good Curve. Some Removal has the Skull Clamp. All right, it's a fine deck. Uh, <laughs> Tom's deck is... Um, well, he's got a lot of colors and uh, no real game plan. It's some decently good cards. He's going to play the memory jar that he's got in the sideboard because of Bowmasters. But like, yeah, like Minsk and Boo, Pest Infestation, Days, Spell Pierce, some removal, Birds, a bunch of good lands, including Strip Mine. So that, that part's decent. It's just not the most focused deck, but that's all right. I, I do like drafting decks like this a decent amount. And then um, Dan is on an Academy deck with Opal, Bobble, a bunch of artifacts, Kinnon, Basalt Monolith, Upheaval, Echo of Eons, Ballista, kind of half-splashing Parallax Wave and Comet, but you know what? That, that sounds sweet to me. All right, well, we got some decks here. Let's see how this goes. I think this might be a close one. All right, time for round one, battling against Samuel Rolf, and what do we have here? Yeah, you know, I actually think this hand's okay. If I find a blue source off this lush portico, then I think that I can have a pretty decent hand. Oh, I'll keep Avacyn's Pilgrim because now I get to go turn two, play two one drops. And if I, uh, eh, okay, never mind. Probably going to lose. <laughs> uh, Mana Crypt's tough. Into turn one dark depths. Okay, that's odd. I don't love that I have to play Beseju here, but. I think in order to have a good shot, I do I do have to play it. If he has the uh, Thespian stage right away, then things could be a bit rough for me. Elite Spellbinder. Uh, that I don't care too much about because I have two good four mana plays. And we're just hoping to draw an island here. A basic island. Not much, not, not too much to ask for, right? Uh, all right, well, forest is fine. Let's just undermount adventure, go get an island. And then attack here. Mm -hmm. And send. Obviously, he's going to take it because he wants to take the initiative back and take a creature. But if I had drawn an island, I could have maybe bounced the spellbinder. But... Drawing a forest means I kind of just had to play Undermount Adventure there. Next turn, I can play Teferi and Smash. And what else can I do? I might be able to play the Questing Beast, too. It'll kind of depend. I mean, I have six mana with the Undermount Adventure. That's how much Questing Beast costs. You got an island here. All right. Presumably, it's going to play something, but I guess I don't know. Let's see what you got. Four mana over there. And he knows that I'm going to get to play a Teferi next turn, which is going to prompt something. And then on my turn, I might end up... I could go Teferi, pump Hexdrinker, something like that. Tinker is a lot worse with Teferi. 
Oh, Trinket Mage, okay. And we got Chromatic Star. All right, so I get to take my turn here. And I don't have the initiative yet, but I will likely get it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna to wanna to play Tireless Tracker. Well, what am I gonna do next turn? Or this turn? I guess what I could do is I could pump the Hex Drinker three times and then attack for seven. That seems better than playing a Hex Drinker, I think, or than playing a Tireless Tracker. And I guess I'll leave, which one do I wanna leave untapped? I guess, I actually don't even know if I'm playing Teferi this turn, let's see. Because I'm going to attack with both here. And I can play Hex Drinker or a Tireless Tracker post combat if I want. Because I can play Teferi and bounce the Spellbinder. Oh, he's going to Solitude me. Okay. That is unfortunate. So now he gets to keep the initiative. But he had to pitch the Ephemerate, which is nice. I'm glad I pumped the Hex Drinker. I think it would have worked out a lot less well if I hadn't. All right, well, in that case, I'm not playing anything post-combat, so I'm just going to pump the Hex Drinker two more times. And pass the turn. Yeah, I mean, Solitude was pretty good, but also, like, pumping the Elite Spellbinder here isn't that big of a deal. I'm still at 20. So, yeah, he's scrying two instead. If he can start losing some Mana Crypt flips, I could be pretty close to getting Mana Crypt going here. Okay, lost the flip. And... On my next turn, let's see what he's got. He's going to crack the Chromatic Star here. Make a blue, okay. Brainstorm? All right, I mean, that's fine, but it's just not the most fearsome. And then I get to still play Teferi. I could also play Tireless Tracker. I could also potentially play Questing Beast, though. I think that's like the least likely of the plays that I would want to make here. So he's going to Brainstorm. He has three mana left, but also hasn't played a land yet. On my turn, if I draw a Feywild Caretaker and take the initiative, that could be kind of interesting. One of the things about... Uh, having multiple initiative creatures in your deck is when they have the initiative, you have the trick where you can attack them, take the initiative back, then play your initiative creature and advance two levels that turn. Or, of course, you can just cast it, take the initiative, so that they can't stop you from doing that with jumping or anything. That's the other option. But we'll see how this brainstorm goes and uh, what Sam's going to put on the board here. All right. Brainstormed into Grim Monolith. Into Karn? Got to make a token, I would imagine. Into LED... Okay, well, I guess I know what I'm bouncing with Teferi. <laughs> All right, so I take a hit. Um, so do I want to pump? I think I just pumped the, the Hex Drinker. I think that's going to be my play here. Okay, bounce the Construct. Oh, that's funny. I guess that's actually better. So let's just attack... I'm uh, just going to attack Sam here. Attack for five. And take the initiative. And I'm going to go into the forge. I'm going to put two counters on the pilgrim here. Pass the turn. And <laughs> I've got Flash Worm, which is kind of obvious because he knows I have World Spine Worm in hand. But... I think that's going to be my best bet here. He won the flip, but still pretty dead to trap here. I'm not very dead to Elite Spellbinder attacking me, and I don't really know what he's going to be doing here, but I think putting three five fives into play is a pretty nice little backup plan. Because I couldn't kill him this turn. I could have done two more damage, because I could have made this bigger and then hit He's attacking me. I can't stop that, so I'm just going to take it, let him take the initiative, and get his treasure, I think, is what he gets off of this one. He's in the stash. Okay. Still can't play instance because of that Teferi, so I know the flash is uncounterable, but I could have only done two more damage, so it could have tried to make him lose the flip, but all right, he's got Wrath. 
Well, drawing Flash was pretty nice, I gotta say that. <laughs> uh, and Steph, I'm gonna go ahead and flash in World Spider Worm, and that'll be game one. <laughs> All right, siding against that deck. Um, I mean, Quasali Pride Mage seems like it could be good. Would I need a basic planes? Because I do have a plane. I could use Undermount or Kate Caretaker to get a planes, but I still don't think I have enough white sources without it. Thieving Skydiver looks great. Bankbuster might be a little on the slow side. Subtlety looks great. Eh, do I want Deathrite Shaman? Deathrite's just a generically good card. I don't really have that many ways to put lands in the graveyard. I kind of think I like where I'm at here. Let's see uh, what Sam's brought to the table. Beat a turn on Mana Crypt, though his hand was, of course, a little bit awkward. All right, well, this is a pretty ABC hand. Turn one, Ignoble Hierarch. Turn two, maybe cast Kite Sail Larcenist. I might have had to pitch it to Subtlety already, though probably not by turn two is my guess. And then turn three, Undermount Adventure. That's kind of what we're going for. Let's see what Sam's got here. All right, I will keep this hand. And he also kept his seven. And hopefully he doesn't lead with Mana Crypt again. Because that would be unfortunate. I would like to be able to cast this Larsenist because that's my only two drop. Or draw a different, or three drop rather. Or draw a different three drop to play on turn two. Thieving Skydiver would probably be pretty nice. Wouldn't mind, uh, wouldn't mind a Tireless Tracker. Really anything I can put into play on turn two would be nice. Eh, there's the Mana Crypt, okay. And turn on DT. Yep. Well, it's not going to be easy, I don't think, but subtlety and larcenist are both decent disruptive elements. We'll see if we can if we can do something here. Uh, Sylvan Caryatid isn't actually a very good draw. Let's see. Loose mana crypt flip, start off the right way. <laughs> Yay, lost the flip. And four mana Karn. Yeah, I think I will subtlety the Karn. Feels like that is worth doing here. You can put it on top. Oh, I drew a Mox Diamond. Well, that's that's amazing. All right. This is why you put Mox Diamond in your deck, I guess. Discard Forest. Then play Under Mountain Adventure. And I guess go get another green. Sure. Pass the turn. And let's see if he loses the flip again. He won the flip. And we'll find out if he kept Karn on top. I think he probably did. But I prefer to live live a life of mystery. Let's see what he's got. Oh, he did keep it on top. All right, Karn, make a token, play a land. Okay, I'm just going to go into... I think I go into the Lost Well here. Because I would like to find one of my hasters this turn. All right, bottom. I'll keep Hex Drinker, though. Hex Drinker's fine. Let's attack Karn. I mean, it kind of doesn't matter. Oh, did I take my beginning of combat step off somehow? Uh, it doesn't really matter because he's just going to chump with the Construct token, I imagine. <clears throat> Play Hex Drinker. Land. Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker. Hex Drinker, and then Sylvan Caryatid, and Pump Hex Drinker again. I could have put Forge on Ignoble and both attacked Karn, but I don't think that that's that strong. I'd rather just get the, not guaranteed, but make it a lot likelier that I get to draw something strong. He's not very close to casting Wrath, which is why I didn't mind playing out all my creatures. It's not like slow rolling the Sylvan Caryatid is going to do that much for me. Oh, there's a Plains. He's getting, getting fat. Getting a little bit closer here. Let's see what he's got for two mana here. I mean, I just need one hit with the Hex Drinker, and it does a pretty good job. Grim Monolith, okay. What is this for seven mana? Okay, I mean, this could be big. Fracture Identity, the Hex Drinker. Oh, all right. And then pump hex drinker twice. Okay, well I need something else then here. I'm gonna get to go to the stash. And oh, I went to the wrong one. I just clicked on that. All right. Well, I'll goad. <laughs> I guess I'll goad the construct token. I meant to hit stash, but uh, 
so if I attack with the Undermountain, they have to block both to kill it. Okay. I will hit, I guess. Then pass the turn, so... Ooh. Taking it down to 10. I, I don't mind getting some damage in with a Mana Crypt in play. Okay, he won the flip. So he can make... Hex, with one more mana, he can he can pump Hex Drinker to max here. Uh, he can have a Chromatic Star, I guess. Maybe he has the land anyway, but no reason to make it easy for him. Plays the Chromatic Star, so it looks like Hex Drinker is not going to be leveled up to max here. I am going to have to chump, I guess, with both my other creatures, but then next turn I get to get... To, to go to the catacombs and both the creatures would be tapped at that point so I don't mind that um, oh we had enough mana to do it anyway okay well that attacks I guess I'll block with the uh, carry to this pro everything I'll block with carry to I think because I have mana from mox for everything all right let's get a skeleton and Oh, I guess I can go into either direction now. So going to the arena did help. But I think I still probably want a 4-1 unblockable or 4-1 menace. No, I'm actually I'm just going to take an extra card here. Well, that didn't work out great. Let's play this. Put in my graveyard and pass the turn. Just going to take some damage. Hopefully he lost the flip. Okay. I am going to lose the initiative here. Presumably, because the Hex Drinker is going to attack. And I can't block it. All right, you take it. You get the initiative. And I'm hoping to draw... I guess Feywild Caretaker, because that would get me to the Throne of the Dead 3. All right, yeah, I don't think a 4-1 would have gotten me out of this. So I'm, I'm happy enough doing that. But Palantir, sure. Into another Karn struct land. Okay, so now I will deny him the card. And I hit Wrath of God. Oh, Thieving Skydiver. I'm at 10. Okay, let's go Thieving Skydiver. X equals 3. I think I'm just going to take Palantir. And hope that uh hope that I get some action here and then next turn I get to do some chump blocking or we'll have to do some chump blocking but I get to scry two and if I leave any on top he's kind of got to let me have it don't really want plow under um, I don't really want eagles of the north I have world spine worm in my deck I feel like he's just got to let me draw Indeed he does. Okay, he's going to get to go to Forge here. What are we doing in response to the initiative? Oh, Swordsing the Ignoble Hierarch. Okay, I'm at 10. Chump, chump. I take 9, I go to 1 it looks like here. If he puts 2 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Oh, I guess he can't, he can't even put them on the Hex Drinker, <laughs> which is funny. Okay, uh, block, block, go to three. He's on four. Hmm. I just need to find one of my four power creatures. Yeah, I guess I'll play my land first. I've got Questing Beast and Axebane Ferox, and they both pretty much get the job done. All right, let's bounce Construct and four mana, four, four haste. Nope. Mm. I guess I could pass the turn and, and see what Palantir hits, but I don't really see how that could possibly save me. Nope. All right. Uh, very close there. Definitely could have done some things differently. But uh, well, Fractured Identity and Swords do, did turn the, turn the tide. Mm, do I want Kosali Pride Mage? This isn't really making me want Kosali Pride Mage all that much. Lotus Field, Grist. 
No, I think I think I like where we're at. Let's see how this goes. All right, I'm on the play. Let's go Mox. Um, no, but this hand is great. Turn one, ignoble. Turn two. Turn two, I can play a three drop or I can play Cobra Karyatid, so we'll have to see. Let's hope Sam doesn't open on Mana Crypt for the third game here. One game off Mana Crypt seems fair, especially since I haven't even drawn Mox Sapphire yet. Not not in a spot where, you know, it actually matters. All right, there's Flash. Um, well, I don't really have anything that I need to hit with uh, Larsonist, so I'm just going to do this. Green, Karyatid, and hope... Hope I don't get wrath too early here. <laughs> that that will be kind of a beat. Okay, there's well, wrath is ready to go. Yeah, and you know what? If you've got wrath, you got wrath. What am I gonna do? I'm gonna attack. I'm gonna pass, and I'm gonna hope Sam doesn't wrath me because if he does, I've got a redraw to World Spine Worm. But other than that, I'm pretty dead. Nope, we're getting wrath, of course. Of course, and let's go Lush Portico Graveyard, and I guess I'll play the Larsenist. Sure, why not? That was just my hand. I, I couldn't I couldn't play around Wrath, so I didn't try to. It didn't really make sense to do so. If you didn't have Wrath, we'd be in great shape. And if you did, then well, now we can't win. <laughs> I mean, if I draw World Spine Worm, that can win out of nowhere for sure. If I draw Underman Adventure, then that's not terrible. Brainstorm into Tinker. Okay, what are we tinkering for? A Blight Steel. Interesting. Teferi? No, that's not a Teferi. I will play the Questing Beast, I guess. And then. I think I'm just going to leave back the Kite Sail Larsenist to chump. And see what we can do here. Certainly wasn't beating Tinker Colossus by playing slow. <laughs> I mean, if I draw Teferi, then I feel like I'm back in it. Because... Oh, wow. Um, so if he DTs for Swords to Plowshares and I block with just Larsenist, I lose. All right, I guess I'll have to do that. I'm not going to double block. The Colossus here like that's just a, a terrible play I will end up losing this game but double blocking is also like conceding so it's fine if he wants to to swords me then I will I will accept that or touch the spirit realm sure all right well unfortunate but uh it's, uh, so it goes all right, time for round two. Uh, so my opponent lost round one, which is good. My, you know, I like when my team wins. The bad news is my opponent has Ancestral and Mox Jet <laughs> and Mana Vault, so this could be a tough one. I will keep this hand, though. This hand's kind of interesting. So I could play turn one. I guess it's just clearly a turn one Pilgrim, turn two Bank Buster Karyatid. The other alternative would be to go turn to Bankbuster plus activate instead of playing the Sylvan Karyatid, but I kind of feel like, given that Tishana's Tidebinder is going to be up soon if I play Karyatid, I kind of like playing Karyatid and doing it that way. Uh, upkeep Ancestral, yep. Oh, all right. Oh, I guess I can't play turn two Axbane Ferox because I don't have double green. But I'll be able to play Ferox the next turn if I want. I actually wouldn't mind drawing an untapped land here. Let's see. Oh, do they have to discard? All right, I don't mind that. Well, that's not an untapped land. What I could do is I could Ancient Tomb first. Oh, let's, let's see. Is that good? If I Ancient Tomb, Bank Buster, and I draw a card, I can leave up Tishana's Tidebinder and then play Ferox the turn after, or I could just play Ferox this turn. I think I should just play Ferox this turn. And then I'm gonna play Simic Growth Chamber and pick up the Besaju, which is actually kind of a nice little combo. 
and then hit here for five, and then next turn, we'll see what we do. Could leave up Seiju, could leave up Bankbuster, could also, I could see ending up in a spot where I'm just like casting Tidebinder to crew the Bankbuster to attack for eight. That is a very reasonable line as well. So the one card, let's see, so this can nug the triggered ability. They've got Tamiyo, they've got Oko, they've got Displacer Kitten. So let's see, there's Displacer Kitten. Okay, so now I can take the, dis I can use Tidebinder on Displacer Kitten next turn, which is pretty nice. Let's draw with the Bank Buster. Oh, interesting, I can't actually play that. No, what I can do is I can Plane Cycle. Yeah, I can Plane Cycle Eagle of the North, get Temple Garden. Play Temple Garden, play Ignoble, slam for five here. And then I don't know what they're trying to do with this Displacer Kitten, but Tidebinder will counter the trigger and also stop the kitten from triggering in future turns. So they're going to get Oko. And I think I just Tidebinder here. Because I don't want them getting to get multiple Oko uses. I could Tidebinder the first Oko activation, but I think this is pretty good. And they can't uh, they can't Oko to to make the Tidebinder a food in order to stop the Tidebinder's ability. They they would work if they switched. No, actually, it wouldn't work. This is just sits there. Um, they lose all their abilities as long as this is on the battlefield. So if they make this an elk, I think that Displacer Kitten still still loses the abilities. And then next turn, <laughs> I guess one disadvantage is I could have cast the Eagles of the North next turn. <laughs> okay, there's a Mox, sure. And they're going to make their Mox into a 3-3. Three, three. All right, I allow that. Let's draw for the turn. Let's see what... See if we get any sort of interaction here. Mm, no, but I think I'm going to crew the Bank Buster because I don't really care if Bank Buster dies. And then I'm going to attack with both my Ferox and my Bank Buster. And I think I just attack my opponent. I don't think I can attack Oko here. There's just too, too much loyalty and... If I were to attack Oko, with, I could attack Oko with everything, I guess, and they could chump and block, but I think just attacking my opponent's good. Oh, they have Dress Down. Okay, I guess that's kind of annoying mana-wise, but not even really sure. All right, everything's lost their abilities. I guess they can double block the Ferox now. Mm -hmm. And I think I just kill the 3-3. Three, three. Instead of the 2-2. Two, two. Alright. And I could besage you to kill both, but I don't I'm not that worried about it. I think I'll just play Tireless Tracker, play Restless Prairie. I guess I don't get a <laughs> I don't get a food or a, a clue, but then next turn, the Restless Prairie is actually gonna be able to attack for a lot. All my other creatures get plus one plus one. Yeah, that seems pretty good. And then they can make their Mind Stone into a creature, or they can try to. I can besage you it. They know my last card's besage you. Let's see. Eternal Witness. Okay. Get back Ancestral. Sure, that doesn't really seem like it's going to do quite enough for them, but we'll see. They, get, they did get to draw a bunch of cards, and then now they get to... Actually, what are they going to do with their, with their Oko? They could try to steal one of my creatures. They can't use. They can't steal by trying to give me Mindstone because of this Besaju. So that would not work out well for them. Well, if they have another play this turn, okay. Sakura Tri Builder, sure. They have kind of a lot of creatures now, and they're making my tracker into a three-three. Oh, I don't think that's going to work out all that well. We'll see. All right. And what am I hoping to draw here? I guess another creature wouldn't be terrible, but let's crew the Restless Prairie. 
and I'll still have, yeah, I'll still have the mana up to do, to use Besaju here. Let's crew with the Tidebinder. And let's send, let's see. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna attack my opponent with everything and leave back Besaju activation. And so now they have to block, I guess they can leave, leave these two through. Yeah, I mean, they, they've got to do some a bunch of blocking here. They don't have to, they don't technically have to lose everything. Yeah, their they're, kitten's gonna eat the ignoble, but then they're gonna go chump, chump and go to one, which sounds pretty good to me. And I guess the tribe builder gets to get a rebate here, but they lose everything else, go to one. I still have Besaju up if I need it. And well, we'll see what they can do to come out here. But uh, Restless Prairie actually was doing doing some pretty good work there. I wonder if the turn I cycled Eagles and played the Temple Garden, I should have actually just played Restless Prairie. I'm not, I'm not sure. But they're in a bit of trouble here. Getting attacked down pretty hard. You can have all your Moxes and Ancestrals. I've got a bunch of random creatures and I'm beaten down. <laughs> That's what's going on here. A lot of cards in hand and an Oko, so can't count them out yet. All right, Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. All right, so that gains three. They get to put a land into play. And I guess they could Uro again, go to seven. And if they do that, they have two blockers. Let's say they block those two. And they take five going down to two. Oh, they also get to make a food with Oko. Okay, I could I could certainly lose to Uro. A, a six six that gains six is uh is pretty big. I will I think if I draw a creature that can crew bank buster, which I do have a decent amount of. Okay, nature's lore, sure. Then that's still lethal, because they go to seven, and then I'm attacking with these five creatures, and they let three through, yeah, that is that would be lethal. Right, right now they let two through, and so it's not lethal. So yeah, it's gonna basically come down to whether or not I can I can draw a creature that can crew the, the bank buster, or a way to interact with, with their creatures. So they do have Oko still, and so they can make a food. So I guess a Kite Sail Larcenist looks like maybe my best draw. Mm. What else What else would be good here? Oh, they didn't have a land to put into play. Okay, so they can't They can't make a... Oh, they, they have a one drop, and they can make that into an elk. Yikes. Okay, yeah, no, I, I, I'm now back to the point where I know I'm not really going to be winning the race here, or rather I'm not going to be beating them down, but I guess I can try to shift into using Bank Buster to draw cards at that point. Mm -hmm. Let's see what we draw. Yeah, I mean, I'm not doing anything there, so let's draw a card. Land. Play a Sylvan Library and pass the turn. I don't, I don't really have much I can do. I'm going to lose to Uro now, most likely. Uro's good if you can stabilize. And currently, they've got a lot of stuff in play here. All right, cracking their Misty. What you got? Oh, they're going to crack their Mind Stone to a Pyrite Spell Bomb. Mm, so that can kill my Tishana's Tidebinder. Yeah, I don't love that. All right, yeah, Tidebinder's down. I don't, don't really have a way to stop that. And they're going to attack with the Uro now. And they didn't play a land, which means they have all spells in hand. I'm going to take six here. I I'm a, I only have one turn here anyway. It's I, Actually, I don't even think I can win. Like, I assume they're going to be able to... Oh, I mean, I guess I'll besage you that. I don't really think I can get away with not. Oh, they didn't even sack it to draw a card. Yeah, I'm super dead. <laughs> They're going to get to Oko a bunch of times here, presumably. And I'm not really sure what I can draw past that. 
Okay, that's not a non-creature spell. All right, I mean, I guess that's that. All right, let's see if I can sylvan into anything. <laughs> uh, yeah, all right, well, good beats, I suppose. Had a lot of pressure, but lost it down the stretch. Um, yeah, I guess I'm ready to battle. I mean, I could put in an Armageddon. I'm not sure how much I love that. I feel like I will have to be winning for that to be good. Maybe this deck can do that sometimes, but I feel like I, I'm i not confident enough that I'll be ahead enough that Armageddon is where I want to be. All right, I'm on the play here. Let's see, what do we got? Well, it's a keepable hand. Ancient Tomb would, would be the nuts in this hand if I, if I could draw that, but... Even without it, turn one ignoble, turn two, maybe tracker, maybe sylvan carried, kind of depends. And of course, if I draw flash, this uh, world spine go, goes hard. Okay, land lotus petal, sure. Um, hmm. Sylvan library is also kind of interesting. What if I go Karyatid and draw a land and then, no, you know what, I'm just going to play the tracker. Look, if I draw a land, this is awesome. This is by far the best. I'm playing against someone who's got a bunch of pieces of power. I feel like I should just kind of take the gamble. Any land means I can now get a clue and then play two two drops. If I play Karyatid and I miss on lands, it's not like it's that exciting anyway. So I'm just going to bank on hitting a land. And if I miss, I miss. And so, so it goes. But if I hit a land, then this hand has a lot more explosive. And if I hit an Ancient Tomb, then we're really talking. Oh, geez, Mana Vault. Okay, well, land is great, so let's go land. Make a token. Play Karyatid. Play Library. I just don't want to get hit by uh, Dress Down, making it so my things don't tap for mana. And if, with the Tireless Tracker in play and not already having a clue, Sylvan Library is the least important of my two cards, so if they want to counterspell the Sylvan Library, that I don't mind so much. I, I'm going to get to hit for four this turn, and then next turn, likely cast Plow Wonder, though again, Ancient Tomb would just be a wonderful draw at any point here. I suppose Flash would be my actual best draw. All right, let's see if Sylvan Library does the trick. All right, Library's in, Tireless Tracker, whacking for four. And opponent going to 16, no plays. I'm a little worried about what's coming next, but I don't really have, I think this was the best sequence here. Got a lot of stuff in play. It's gonna be Displacer Kitten into untapping Mana Vault. Though playing the pedal when, for, when you're not gonna use it, when you have Displacer Kitten in your deck is a pretty big cost, so that leads me to think that my opponent does have some kind of spell to play with this. Maybe a counter spell, and they didn't want to counter either Tracker, Sylvan, or Sylvan Carrotid. I guess I played two Sylvans that turn. Okay, Dress Down. Not sure what... Is that just really looking for a green source or something? Oh, we're going to play Uro now. <laughs> That's funny. Because of dress down, Uro doesn't get to, doesn't get sacrificed, and then a pyrite spell bomb. Oh wow, we're gonna kill the tireless tracker right away too. Okay, can I just draw a Teferi or something? Thieving skydiver. No, no, oh, this is awful. All right, I guess I'll pay a million life. I'm gonna go to ten, crack that, and. Plow Under, which is so much less effective when there's an Uro in play, but I don't really have a better play, so I'm going to Plow Under here. I'm going to take six. I'm going to go to four. And then I'm going to hope to find Teferi, Flash, any of those things. And go from there, I guess. All right, what do you got? Mind Stone as a follow-up? Sure, that's not too bad. All right, Temple Garden is nothing. Draw three. Okay, Feywild Caretaker. So put on top, put on top, and I can go Lotus Cobra, play a forest at a blue. And I don't think I'm gonna tap the, the Ancient Tomb yet. 
I'm going to play the caretaker, go get another island. And they've got Uro out, but I'm at least battling now. I'm at least making forward progress. All right, let's get an island and pass the turn. World turn costs 11. Uh, well, we're not there. <laughs> All right. Get to make a 1-1. One, one. And they mana vault. And maybe this thieving skydiver can do something here. We'll have to see. Uro is going to go eat the fairy dragon token. I'm going to allow that. And I'm going to get to draw a card too. And put a land into play. We'll see about that. No land. All right, chump with the 1-1. One, one. Four, six. I'm actually only one short of playing World Spine Worm, which is really funny. Because <laughs> I have six, seven, eight, land is nine, Cobra's ten. So I guess if I find Mox Sapphire, I could just cast World Spine Worm. Not that that's the most exciting, but it is something that, that I could do. <laughs> so they don't have a land in hand. We have four mana. What, what could they be doing here? Guess we'll find out. We even just got to shuffle off this Sylvan, so it's three new cards. Well, this game ended up being pretty close. If they tap out, I can also steal their Mind Stone with a Thieving Skydiver, so I don't mind that either. All right, an Oko Thief of Crowns. Make my Mana Vault into a thing. Sure. Uh, I could kill... Hmm. I can currently without Forge, kill the Oko by attacking with Cobra and Feywild Caretaker. And then what am I doing? Uh, I think I'm just, I don't think I'm racing them. I think I'm gonna go to Lost Well. I think I'm gonna really try to find a Teferi. All right, bottom Abyssin's Pilgrim, bottom Temple Garden. Draw a Growth Chamber. All right, Sylvan. <laughs> I mean, I can cast the World Spine Worm, I guess, but Wait, right, I can't even do that, right? Six, seven, eight. Because I have to keep. I can't. Because I can't keep any of these cards. So, given that's the case, if I'm going to Skydiver this turn, I guess I would rather keep the Simic Growth Chamber. Six, seven, eight. Yeah. X equals two. Yoink that Mind Stone. Got to tap it in response here. They didn't tap it. Not a good play. Because uh, I'm going to end up cracking it. I guess I'll play the Growth Chamber. Add a green and draw a card. Bounce a forest. And then now I've got to kill Oko, so I'm going to do that. Attack Oko, attack Oko. And then leave my idiots back. And then now I've got... Blockers here. I'm going to get some new Sylvan cards, and then next turn I can go to the stash. I guess next turn I can definitely cast the World Spine Worm. <laughs> here I'm probably going to double block Mana Vault with my two tokens and uh, Chump Uro with something. Main Phase Mystical for Ancestral. Attack with Uro, draw Ancestral. Sure. Legolas is quick reflexes. Okay, so whenever it becomes tapped, it can deal damage. So I guess it's going to kill my Feywild Caretaker. I would imagine here. Mm, okay. Yeah. They don't have a land to put into play yet, which is nice. So I don't get value there. And then let's go chump block. Double block. All right, take those out, and then they're going to Ancestral and presumably play a land afterwards. So next turn, two, four, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, well, let's go into the stash here. Mm -hmm. Draw my land and then Sylvan here. Besaju and Subtlety. All right, um, I mean, I guess I'm gonna put on top 
Put Besejo on top. Play another land, add a green. So this is 11 mana, and this is 6, 7. Yeah, I mean, I guess, I guess I'm going to go for it. World Spine Worm. <laughs> I have four mana left, so I guess I'll keep the uh, Sylvan Karyatid untapped. Play World Spine Worm. What else am I going to do? <laughs> I got nothing better to do here. And sure, I'll attack with the Cobra, I guess. I don't know. It seems reasonably safe to attack with the Cobra. I don't really have a better thing to do. All right, World Spine Worm, get in there. Next turn, I get to go to the Catacombs. Okay. My opponent's already used Oko. They could have Mystic Confluence to bounce the World Spine Worm. That would be kind of bad. But again, I can't do anything about that. If they don't have an answer, then the World Spine beats up on Uro pretty nicely. Not enough to, like, you know, attack and kill them, but enough to, to be good. All right, come on. Yeah, yeah. All right. I guess I'll chump. And draw for my turn. I've never played against a game where Uro attacked so many turns and the game wasn't over. All right, well, I get a 4-1 now. I get to draw. I get to Sylvan. Questing Beast is kind of nice. All right. So let's go. Hmm. Questing Beast. Lotus Cobra, and hit for four here. And then I've got three blockers. I can't cast Subtlety, but I think casting the Questing Beast is pretty important. They can't quite beat me with Eternal Witness. I will likely get to uh, go to the Throne of the Dead 3 next turn. That would be kind of nice. And then... I could have cast Cobra and not Questing Beast to keep up Subtlety, but I feel like Questing Beast getting a hit in and then offering some kind of blocks is probably better. I'll probably block with Skeleton Token and Cobra, though honestly they can just bring Uro back. Maybe I'll just chump with Lotus Cobra. Let's see, five, six, seven. I'm not very close to recasting World Spine Worm now that I can't tap Ancient Tomb. And I am going to get to hmm. now they're definitely putting lands into play now do I block I think I just block with the Cobra I could throw in the skeleton but they can just bring Uro back it doesn't really feel like that's where I want to be this looks like an eternal witness which is really unfortunate oh Tamiyo okay what are we getting back with Tamiyo I didn't even see what that was. But Displacer Kitten? <laughs> I, I'm at two. They could just get Pirate Spellbomb back. <laughs> like, yeah. I, I mean, I guess I'll let them do, do their thing. But, <laughs> all right, all right. That, that, that'll be enough. And uh, unfortunately, that's that. And uh, we are 0-2 here. So let's get on to round three. Alrighty, well, Falero is a green-white, like, red aggro deck that has a Soul Ring and a Mox. We got outpowered pretty hard this draft, unfortunately. Um, honestly, I think I can just mulligan this hand. It just doesn't do anything early. This is a lot better. I'm going to keep this. I think I'm just going to put the Simic Growth Chamber back, because my plan is to... I'm going to keep the World Spine Worm, because if I draw Flash, I can just do that. And then here I can cycle eagles. Oh, there's the flash. All right. Cycle eagles and then uh, play karyatid. But I guess I'll just try to cheese out Falero in response. Cycle. Let's get the temple garden. Draw. Play an island. Pass. I'm just going to ambush the inti here. If... Uh, 
one Flare attacks here. All right, discard a card, I would assume. And then before this resolves, let's cast Flash. Put World Spine Worm in. Shuffle in the worm. And then I will go ahead and block Exiled Sentinel of the Nameless City. Yeah, sure. Tr triple block. And Falera can play a land in a Sentinel if he wants. Uh, Soaring. Soaring's pretty good. Into Flicker Wisp to kill one of the tokens. All right. All right, all right. Oh, Mox is not bad. Let's attack for, he's only got two cards in hand. Don't really want a Time Twister given that. So I think I'm gonna do is play Karyatid and then play the Bank Buster. And then if I want, I can Time Twister next turn. But no reason not to get more stuff into play. All right, up a game here. We got our Flash on and he's got a Fetch Land too. All right, that makes, that probably, Gets me, gets me there on death. Right, Shaman is my guess. Thieving Skydiver, I definitely want. Plow Under looks a little weaker against an aggressive deck that has a bunch of power. All right. Uh, yeah, well, I'm just gonna have to mulligan that. This hand seems fine. Let's see. I go turn one, Pilgrim. Turn two, I can play Cobra. I guess I don't need Eagles here. It only has one land left to get anyway. Mm, turn on Mother Runes is a little annoying. Okay, Forest into Avacyn's Pilgrim. I guess uh, Tishana's Tidebinder is actually a pretty nice answer to that. Mother Runes getting Tidebinder can not only help you win that fight that turn, but also makes it so Mother Runes doesn't do much later. All right, imprinted the Death Greeter's Champ, sure. I don't really want to block. That's it. Interesting attack though. Cobra, Restless Prairie, and add a black, because I don't have anything to spend it on. All right. Well, next turn I can play, uh, just play a Feywild Caretaker. It seems pretty good. I'll have a green and a blue, blue blocker, so can't get, Mother Runes can't just automatically steal the initiative back. Flair's done it just three cards in hand. He doesn't have a big play this turn. A giver of runes, I see. All right, well, I guess I'll play this. Out of blue. Feywild Caretaker. Get another blue. Pass the turn. Get a 1-1. One, one. Okay, he gets to Questing Druid hit Flicker Wisp and Mountain. Uh, Flicker Wisp is kind of annoying because it can kill my Fairy Dragon token. But I guess that's the same as making a Blade Splicer to some degree. Mm, so what's the plan here? How are you how are you gaining the initiative? You gotta attack with either three things or attack with two things. No, attacking with two things doesn't work, because I go I mean, it works in the sense that uh you make me trade off, a, lose a Lotus Cobra, but I get to keep the initiative. Oh, this way I don't. All right, I see. All right, well, I'll block there and I'll block here. So I'm blocking Feywild Caretaker on the Golem and then Cobra on the Giver of Runes. Mother of Runes can save one of them. And then I take one and lose the initiative, but then I just get the initiative back. So when I attack with a... Oh, he didn't... We're not saving anything with Mother Runes. We're going to keep it on the defense here, huh? Okay. So it looks like... So I lost Cobra. He lost Giver of Runes and a 3-3. Three, three. Let's see. And then end of turn, nothing comes back. So I draw. So I have five mana up, so I... Losing the Cobra wasn't a big cost for that. For that, I guess. What I think I'm going to do is I attack. I could attack with Caretaker and Pilgrim. Yeah, that actually seems pretty good. Let's see if he double blocks. 
I get the initiative back. Because we double blocked Caretaker, that's kind of annoying. But I do, he does lose both Mother of Runes and Flicker Wisp. And I get the initiative back, so I think that's okay. All right. Now I'll pass. I don't get the initiative back, but I'm going to dunk on the Mother of Runes with Tishana's Tidebinder here. Let's see. Counter that. And then post combat, I'll play a tap land and pass. And then now I don't have the initiative, and he does, but I have a Larcenist as well, which can help. And I can animate my Restless Prairie. So I feel like I've got a little bit of action here. Let's see. I mean, I played against Mother of Runes and Giver of Runes, and we're still kind of doing okay in combat. So, <laughs> you know, that part's not too bad. Oh, Axe Bane Ferox has got to be pretty nice. So what happens if I attack with Axe Bane Ferox? He double blocks, keeps the initiative. What happens if I attack with Ferox plus Feywild Caretaker plus Tidebinder? What happens if I attack with all of them? Hmm. I could also attack with the Prairie. I guess what's kind of nice is what if I Larcenist the Sentinel and then he has to go trade Chump and the, and the Sentinel's gone and I have a Flyer. And then next turn I have the the uh, Ferox to come in. I think that works pretty nicely. And he can no longer double block the Caretaker either. I mean, he could, but then I would get the initiative. I was just going to take it all. All right. Well, I like that. All right. So now let's go to, let's just go to the Forge here and then put two counters on the Larcenist. And then end of turn, I even get a 1 1 now. So. I feel like I have the initiative fairly well in hand. I mean, if he kills the Larcenist, that's pretty annoying. Get lost on the Larcenist. All right. Going to pay the ward. I'm going to get my tokens. He does get a Sentinel back. But in order to take the initiative, he has to attack with three things. Or no, just two is also good enough. I guess he doesn't know I don't have any blockers and he goes into the trap i'm at 14. Uh, all right he revealed a ragavan he's gonna bin that so this is how much this is six nine oh, i guess i have to block damn i was hoping to not be able to block and then go go pretty low and keep my one one flyer but Okay, I'm going to four here, and presumably doesn't have a post-combat creature, I would hope. All right, he does not. Field a Mountain. All right. Lush Portico. Um, Let's go four. These are both not lethal. He doesn't, I don't know what he's got coming. Um, let's go map token on Feywild Caretaker. Yeah, I'll put Time Twister in the graveyard. And then now I can play the Ferox. And then I can attack with Ferox and Feywild Caretaker. He bounces bounces off the Caretaker, goes to 10, go, really goes to 5. But I get the initiative back. And then play a Lush Portico, put that in the graveyard, pass, get a 1-1. One, one. If he's got another removal spell, I die. But if he doesn't, I'm in really good shape. And because right now I'm like chump block, go to two. Oh, this isn't good. Whatever this is, steel seraph. Okay. Well, that isn't great because he can get lifelink now. And that means he could attack with everything. Oh, is he really not attacking with everything? Interesting. So what happens if he attacks? Yeah, this has got to be the attack. Um, at four, chump, and then block, go to two, lose the initiative, he gets one, one, or he gets a, a card, rather. All right, I have to draw something here, I guess. I mean, I do have a Restless Prairie, so that's kind of nice, too. If I draw Teferi, I think I win the game pretty easily. Revealed Raging Ravine, sure. Okay, Deathrite Shaman, and that would have been uh, Plow Under. Yeah, I wouldn't did not. So if I attack with everything, 
If I tackle the Restless Prairie, they have to block one, but then this just blocks that, that blocks that. That really doesn't do much for me. If I attack with just Axe Bane, I pretty much die. I can't draw a card off Tireless Tracker. Um, I guess I've got a map token into Basaju. All right, that seems easy enough. <laughs> Island does not do the trick. I mean, I guess I can fire up the Restless Prairie and see what, what happens here. Oh, double block that? Okay. And yeah, I guess I don't get a thing end of turn. All right, sure. Kill the Steel Seraph, get the initiative, draw a card. There's my Teferi. Oh, that would have done it. I can play Death Rite, but I'm at two against a 2-2. Two -two. And I guess that'll do it. All right, well, going to game three here. Let's see. Um, yeah, I still don't really feel like I want to swap things up. I think this is good. All right, I am on the play. Turn one flash. No. So this is turn one land go, turn two growth chamber. Yeah, but it's pretty good after that. And Thieving Skydiver against Sol Ring and Chrome Mox is pretty good. Um, if I draw a forest on turn two, this hand gets pretty exciting as well. I think this is keepable. It's not the best in the world for sure. Playing opponent mold to six here. Okay, it's hopefully not a turn on Raghavan. Okay. Um, I guess I'm going to cast a Thieving Skydiver for two mana and hope that this blocks the Raghavan. No plays. Okay, okay. Uh, I could Larcenist the Raghavan, but I think I'm just gonna go Island, Growth Chamber, go. And then next turn, if I draw a forest, oh, I did, so now I can go. I think I'll still actually still just play Tireless Tracker though. Let's just get that going. Tracker, play, land, get a clue. Still not attacking here. Well, Falera molded a six and kept a turn one Raghavan hand and is getting punished for it. You know what? We take those. <laughs> I have no, uh, I have no qualms about that. All right, let's draw a card off Tracker here. See what we get. Not a whole lot that I could imagine mattering too much. All right, Karyatid. Just play the Lush Portico. Surveil. Uh, I'll put a Mox to my graveyard. I don't need that. And then. That'll do it. Competitive game three, but we had some pretty sick uh, the first two games in the first two games. This uh, close draft, but unfortunately, I think we are on the downswing here. But I'll let my teammates resolve that because that is it for it. And one and two, a little disappointing. This deck had the capability of some really fast draws, but I lost to early mana crypt out of Sam and some really uh, close games against the blue green player who had three pieces of power or whatever. So it, it is what it is. But I appreciate you watching, hanging out with me as I attack them for four with my four fours. And uh, that'll do it for today. But you know what? I'll be right back here tomorrow with another draft. Hope to see you there. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps out the channel and you won't miss a single draft.